Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokemon Black and White! That build-up! Just... After a whole journey of Black and White utterly killing it with the sound design! That build-up utterly blew me away! I've never gotten tired of it since! And this Victory Road, hands down! Best Victory Road, best badge check gates, best build-up ever! That song never stops building up for anything unless maybe you get into a battle! It's just... It's so well done, gets you pumped up for what's going on, let's get moving! Why can't the sound design be like that all the time, man? Holy shift tree, or uh, I guess there aren't any shift tree that live here, so holy shelmet, but... It sounds equally lame either way you go, so whatever it is, I'm just impressed by it! Grabbing a max revive right off the bat, once again we have optional use of HMs and they don't even interrupt the music, so it just gets to keep building, and I never want it to end. Love this victory road. So, so much. I don't love dust clouds, however. My gushing certainly overed quickly. First of many battles. Before going to the Pokemon League, let me test my skills. I will do the same on you. That is what you do whenever you meet face to face with somebody in Victory Road. Or face to face with anyone, really, who happens to have Pokeballs on them and it isn't in a town. Whimsicott! Hmm, with much whimsy, we will take you on. Go on out there, Miss Ottawa, and show her what you are made of. Miss Whimsy versus Miss Ottawa. Don't you know the two beauty pageants they were able to win in order to get those titles? <laughs> yeah, no, we're not going to be taken out by any sort of Giga Drain. We're bulkier than that and proud of it. Large and in charge. Sorry, okay, I just. This is what the atmosphere of this Victor Road does to me. Zeb Striker! I'm bulky, but I'm not that bulky. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's have a terabyte. Can always do with more terabytes in your life. It's very fun having two physical attackers that complement one another's abilities, and they work backwards from one another. Where Archaeops runs out of steam if it gets hit, Terabyte gets momentum going if it's able to take out one foe. It's very, very fun, very swell, and just both of these guys have been great fun to use. Love the power trips I get going on with Terabyte and with um, with uh, Zabstrika here. Uh, it's obvious there's always someone better. The Elite Four are said to be waiting at the Pokemon League. I wonder what kind of people they are. I feel like even in real life, whenever there's some sort of person in a champion-like position, they're always interesting people. I can't say I've ever seen that they're like a boring champion of anything I've ever followed. I like how they seem to float to the top. Listen, you can slide down the cliffs here. Watch me. Now you try it. Ah, that's a long 
way down! I can't do it! You can slide down the cliffs here at Victor Road. It takes some nerve the first time, but it's fun! I can slide down, but he sure can't. <laughs> so that's our mechanic here, is we're climbing up a mountain, we can slide down the mountain, but we can't go up. It's like hopping down ledges on roots, but extreme. <laughs> Ooh, gimme. Dusk, whoa! Shoot, a dusk stone? We just got one of those for Chandelure. Wow, that's, that's, in that's, Incredibly extreme is what I'm going to go with right there. It's deserving of multiple adjectives to describe. I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna get this item. Grabbing a rare candy. Usually I'm one to use my rare candies in Victory Road. If all you intend to do is go after N and try to stop him, then sure, that's a good plan. Use up your rare candies because you're gonna get the most experience points possible out of them. If you wish to keep going with your Pokemon training career, however, even a little bit longer, I would recommend that you save your rare candies. As such, I'm not going to be using mine up right away like I usually do at this point. Just wanted to say that really quick in case you were expecting me to use them. I think it is better to hang on to them. Moving right along, we got a hidden item, an Ultra Ball. Exactly what I like to see. These hidden items are once again killing it. Sorry, I can you tell that I like this? Um, at the expense of not only gushing, I really want to know what that guy says. At the expense of not only gushing, I I really don't like how much of a trap that is. I don't want to sour the mood when we're up ahead in our final battles. There is something that's been kind of bothering me that I've been wanting to talk about, and I can only talk about it late game because all of my reasons are now there for us to see, and... I think maybe now might be the best opportunity to do that so that we're not doing it later. I like this story. I totally do. I think N makes it. He's a great antagonist. Uh, we haven't had antagonistic rivals in Pokemon in many years, and I gotta say, I really miss him. This is the last time that we really had that, and it was done very well at this time. I like how N's an antagonistic rival, and also making him the boss of the team that you're fighting against to save the world. I think that that's an interesting approach that they hadn't gone with before and was a unique and interesting way to go about it. The relationship between him and the player is great. I like how he is the he, how he believes himself to be the hero. He thinks he's the good guy in all this. And the other thing that I'll say is I agree with the scene on the bridge that we had on Two Blind Bridge with Getsis. It makes sense for the conflict to come from there being corruption in something like that and for there to be, you know, kind of a middleman who is muddling the message that N is going for and is, you know, pulling the strings. I get what they're going for with that, and I think that Getsis is a good choice to have some to have for somebody who's doing that. I also don't disagree with him gloating to us on the bridge. It's not like he was telling the whole world what he was doing. He told us, who was the biggest threat to his plans, and given the current circumstances that N is able to reawaken the legendary dragon and we haven't done any such thing, I think he had room to gloat, so I don't disagree with that scene. But I'm going to say this. While Getsis has a lot of presence to him, and I don't think that he's a totally bad character, I do think there's a few unfortunate things that bring him down from being all that he could have been. The reason being is that even though I agree with all that, I don't like how you have that scene at the very beginning where the grunts tell you outright that Getsis is tricking people with his speeches. I find that to be kind of lame. I also don't like that scene in Castalia, you know the one, where Getsis says, this is what I, I, I mean Team Plasma, wants. I, I do like this guy, however, I like how he's still screaming the same thing over and over again to himself. I like to think he's doing it in rapid succession, but I think that that's kind of lame because I get that they had to establish that Getsis was up to something, I think the scene on Two Blind Bridge was fine for that, so that way this whole conflict wouldn't just come out of nowhere at a later point. I understand why they did it, and I think it makes sense, but I think they did it just too much, and it comes off as a little bit forced because of that. That is the thing that I don't like about this story, and maybe that's a big deal to you. Maybe the scene with the two grunts at the beginning just felt especially forced to you, and it might have just been better to see them kick the Muna to fight them in the moment. If that's how you feel about him, maybe I can understand why you don't like the story all that much. I think it hinges on how much you like N. I like it overall because I think N is a fascinating character and just all around really interesting, and he is enough to make it for me. But I will say that if you have problems with it, I feel like now I can say why without totally spoiling everything that was going to happen. 
I didn't want to say things about it when we encountered those grunts in the dream yard because we didn't have the scene on the bridge yet. I didn't want to say anything about it in Castilia, but if you didn't like those details, I was right there with you. And I feel like now I can say that. All right. I just wanted to get all that out before we did that. And uh, wow, how daintily holding your crotch you are. I deserve to go down for that one. <laughs> all right. A lot of grass types that we're running into. I think, uh, yeah, you're a pure grass type. Let's have Heal Bert the Hero take you out. Let us do this with much aplomb. Love that word. Ooh, quiver dance. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. One of the best buffing moves in the game, and we know how well I've been doing against those lately. Buff special attack, special defense, and speed all at the same time. Ooh. Back when we went over Lilligant, uh, back all the way in Pinwheel Forest. Sheesh, that was a long time ago. Uh, I praised it for that very reason, and yeah, for good reason. I'll just say that much. All right. Well, getting back on track and getting back into my enthusiasm for Victory Road... We have the final Pokemon that can join you on your travels and join your team before you go on to take the Pokemon League and catch up with N. The help that you are getting begins with Fracture. This is a late game team edition that I can actually get behind. We've already been over this family back in Mistralton Cave and it's one of the best physical attackers in the game. It is guaranteed to be level 40, and that combined with how many TMs we've collected throughout our many travels, you can totally put together a great moveset for this thing. And there's multiple ones out there that you might want to consider. If you regretted passing, if you regretted passing on Axu earlier, it's not too many levels away from becoming fully evolved. It'll take a bit of grinding, but that's the only real downside to getting it now. Next up is Heatmore. Do you even remember that this thing exists, like, ever? I know, says the guy who's using Cryogonal. <laughs> so what does Heatmore do? Not a lot we haven't seen done better from other fire types. In a land dominated by Chandelure and Darmanitan, Heatmore finds itself being more comparable to Simi Seer, and even that's giving it some credit. They have almost identical stats all the way around, except that Heatmore has about half as much speed as Simi Seer. Even worse than that, Simiseer actually learns a lot more TM moves than Heatmore. You'll want to use your Fire Blast TM on this one because its fire moves just utterly stink until it's at ludicrously high levels. The only redeeming quality that I can think of is that it's kind of cute how an Anteater Pokemon learns Bug Bite, but I just find this one to be one of the most unnecessary Pokemon ever created. Even if you've heard it has good type coverage, pretty much every move that would make that true isn't available until later games on it. Seriously, you're better off just forgetting it exists, and you're probably gonna do that anyway. <laughs> and it gets even worse because the ant that Heatmore is supposed to be eating is better than the predator that it's supposed to be worrying about. Durant is awesome. Bug Steel is and always has been a very likable type that is only weak to fire, is immune to poison, and has loads of resistances. It works out nicely with how tanky it is, and much like my little special snowflake Kragonal, it's actually pretty fast and will outspeed most other walls. This is the main trait that differentiates uh, Durant from the other Bug Steel type, Escavalier, since that will never outspeed anything. Durant can outspeed a lot, avoid unnecessary damage, and not have to be on a team with Trick Room in order to do it. Both of its abilities are great, but I'd personally pick Swarm, as it's going to be able to survive hits and take advantage of it fairly often. As for moves, it starts with Iron Head and potentially X Scissor if you don't want to use your TM on it, which actually that makes no sense though, so never mind. It might as well start with X Scissor. It can also potentially start with Crunch. It's compatible with some good TM, so check it out and see what it can do if it sounds remotely interesting to you. This next one is ridiculous. Found in dust clouds 100% of the time is the beast himself, Excadrill. Between Sand Rush doubling its speed and a gigantic 135 attack, it's a near unstoppable force on a team that is packing Sandstorm. It's even better than I made Drillbert sound all that time ago because it starts with Earthquake and Rock Slide. Nothing more to it. It's one of the best Pokemon you can use. And here we are, Dino. The time has come for the super powerful endgame dragon. And it completely and utterly totally sucks. Maybe right now you're thinking, come on, there's no way that you really believe that. The Dino family was a competitive god in its day with some of the best overall stats, great moves, it would two hit anything in the game, and has very few counters. Dino's ability eventually becomes Levitate, so it boasts two immunities on its own. 
It learns so many great moves, especially from TMs. It can have astounding type coverage. It's a monster in battle, and we've had access to the life orb for ages now to make its damage output even more aggressive. So how in any way could it ever suck? It won't fully evolve until level 64. This is the highest requirement of any Pokemon, even to this day, to fully evolve. And we're right in the middle of catching up to N at the Pokemon League. By the time it's at a high enough level, if it ever reaches that point, you'll have nothing left to explore or do except playing matches and verses or grinding up points in the battle subway. I'd like to deviate from the formula a little bit to show Zwilus' stats and what it's like. That's gonna be what you're lugging around for dozens of hours for almost no payoff if you didn't intend on playing in verses. I've raised one of these myself. I gave it the experience share from the moment I caught it, never equipped it, and as soon as it was within range to evolve, I used every rare candy I picked up across the entire travels to top it off and get it evolved as soon as humanly possible. By the time I did so, I was done with the post game except for five battles. This is probably the worst example of an overwhelming superpower and competitive, but something I would never recommend to my worst enemy for anything else. That gives us a couple of really great Pokemon, but also some surprisingly bad ones. And that's been the case for a lot of places that we've explored lately. Hopefully now you can see what I meant when I said that you probably wanted to get a new team member relatively fast. Of course, as soon as I heal, there's a doctor. Let's go see the doctor. I am a doctor. If you have Pokemon in bad shape, let me see your Pokemon in battle. Kind of midpoint that I was hoping for. I hope you didn't feel I went too overboard with Dino there. I have raised his wireless before, like I said, and made it work on the team. It's just such a deep cut knowing that it could be one of the best Pokemon ever, but even though you put in all these hours into training it, it simply will not evolve no matter what you do. Wait. Evio, what? Evio, what? Hey, what? Do I? How do I have the Evio light again? What? I, I changed my home item to Expert Bell the while. How do I have it again? I showed that I had the Expert Belt on. Tonight on Unsolved Mysteries. Goth girls breaking into my room at night and putting a lump of purple goo on my crocodile without me knowing about it. And it's not even an innuendo for anything. That's just how wacky of a scenario that we're dealing with here. Thank goodness Terabyte outspeeds you. Give me that quad a week aerial ace with a moxie. Oh, it feels so good. Oh, I love Levani. Just hard to use. It really is. It's a Pokemon that I wish was a little bit easier to use than it was, because it really could do great things. Your strength is fathomless. I am deeply surprised. Whether your Pokemon are healthy or not, I'll restore them to full. Healthy or not, here I come. <laughs> Alright. I am the best doctor in the world, but first, I intend to be the best trainer in the world. I'm gonna be straight with you. I got so carried away into just being into Victory Road that... I played and played and played and played for like an hour <laughs> and didn't realize how much time had passed. So with this being a midway point, I think this is a pretty good dividing line so that we don't have this go on for way too long. So next time on Pokemon Black and White, we'll be seeing the other half of Victory Road. See you guys then.